Good evening, everybody. It's a privilege for me to be here in front of you tonight. Um, can I teach you something? Something new. Because as I was listening to the sharing, para kulang ng reaction. You know, as, as Christians, meron kami common thing that we do. And when we approve of something that we hear, we say Amen. Amen. Can I hear everybody say Amen? Amen. Very good. Ganun pa yan. If you want to level up a bit and show to the speaker in front that you really approve of what he said, you don't just say Amen. You do this. You close your eyes and say, Amen. Amen. Can you do that? Amen. Okay? Yeah. That's a show of Kubai. Pero meron pa yan, may isa pa. Kung talagang convinced na convinced ka dun sa sinabi ng speaker, pwede kang tumayo at sabihin mo, Amen! Can everybody do that, please? Amen. 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 Alright, so, so that, that's what we're gonna do later. Okay? When, when I share about something, and you feel that you approve of it, just say Amen. 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 So last month, last week, okay, last week, we talk about God's love. Nalamdaman niyo ba na mahal kayo ng Panginoon? Really? Amen. Kulang sa... Come on, help me out here, you know? Please, come on, come on. I need your cooperation. If God truly loves us, I have a question. If God truly loves all of us, if we are God's creation, if God is the creator of this world, did you ever wonder? Why does he allow suffering to happen? Did, did, did that ever cross your mind? Why does God allow suffering to happen to his own creation? It's, it's obvious, brothers and sisters. We see that every day. We see poverty. We see exploitation. We see corruption. Here and there, we see violence every day. Right? Are you with me? Yes. We see it every day. You know, I don't have to go far. I know that there is not one single person in this room who has not experienced suffering. Not one. Maybe in your, in your, when you were younger, when you were younger, you were betrayed. You were rejected by your own parents. And you felt the pain, even up to now. Or, or maybe some of you might be in a, in a deep financial problem. Or, or maybe the doctor telling you, Mom, you have a serious illness. I'm sure each one of us, we all have our stories to tell. You know, as I speak tonight, as I prepare for the talk, I just learned that there is one person who commits suicide every 30 seconds. So as I, as I end my talk later, 60 people already have committed suicide successfully. Seriously. Did you ask that question, Lord? Lord, why? Akala ko ba? Mga anak mo kami. Why do you let this thing happen to all of us? The answer is simple. This is not the original plan of God. No. God 
wanted this world to be a world of peace, of joy, of love. But you know what man did? What did man do? Man rejected the ways of God. Amen. Man rejected the ways of God. It was not God, it was man who turned his back on God. You know, because the original plan of God is paradise. You, you know what paradise is? You know, everything that God made is good. Everything is perfect. You know, in, in paradise, the original plan of God was you don't have to work. Sir, what's your word? Rhonda, what's your word? Construction worker. In paradise, there's no construction workers. You know why? Everything is richly provided for by the Lord. Walang doctor's man. Bakit? Walang may sakit. Everything is organic. No fertilizer. Everything is perfect. I don't, there's nothing to wear. You don't have to worry about terno, no. Because all you have to worry is, you know, is loving and following God. God, ganon. You know, sabi nila, an author once said that in, in Eden, in the Garden of Eden, all you ever do is walk in the Garden of Eden with God every day and sing praises to Him and pray to Him and embrace Him. That's all you ever do. Brothers and sisters, that is the original plan of the Lord, of God for all of us. But it's not happening. Amen? It's not. Say to your person in front of you, why is it not happening? Can you ask the person? Why? Why is it that? Why is it that? Don't answer. I will be the one to answer that. Why? I'm just trying to. Okay, now. Two reasons. First reason. You know what happened to Adam and Eve, right? Sabi nila, the original diet of Adam and Eve, they are vegetarians. Because when they saw the apple, they were so intrigued. It's a joke. They, they were so, you know, man, the instruction of God to man was clear. Do not violate what I tell you. And look at what man did. Man rejected the ways of God. He turned his back on man, on God. He said, Lord, Lord, not your will, but my will. Not your ways, but my way. It's rejection. It's disobedience. It's turning away. The same thing that we do every day, even up to now. We turn our back on Him and say to Him, Lord, not your will, but my will. And where does that lead us? Where does that lead us? When we turn our back to Him, when we say to Him, Lord, I don't need you. I only need myself. Where does that lead us? Sin. Sin. You know, while I was preparing for this, one of the greatest sins that a person can do is indifference. You know what indifference is? Indifference to the ways of God. Indifference to the will of God. Yung sinabi ni Brother Atalina, Elbo, sabi niya, lukewarm. Being lukewarm to God. Okay lang naman. Hindi naman ako kriminal. Di ba, Rosdan? You're not a criminal. But you just go to church every Sunday. Because out of task, 
I'll tell you a story. When I was in Manila, I used to live in Manila. I live in Teacher's Village. On my way to work, at 7 in the morning, I was with my assistant. I was driving. On my way to work, if you're familiar with Quezon City Circle, are you familiar? You, malaking rotonda doon, ikot-ikot. And usually that morning, heavy ang traffic. Matigas. Sabi ko, ano kaya ito? Right in front of me, parang may iniiwasan yung mga kotse. So what I did, I went straight, and lo and behold, right in front of my car, is an old lady lying on the pavement. Napansin ko, her doors blood splattered right next to her. And so I stopped the car, sabi ko, what's this? And my assistant, Doc, baka madamay ka. Sabi ko, hindi. Teka lang. Buha ba ako? Tingin ko, you know what the people did right next to me? Riding in the jeep, riding in their, in their cars, they were just looking. And one person said, Pare, baka madamay ka dyan. Baka ikaw pa yung pagbintangan. Hindi ko matis. Pinulot ko yung babae. I checked her pulse. And when I carried her, mabigat siya. Humingi ako ng tulong. <laughs> mabigat pala. Tinawag ko yung isang ano, isang tao doon. So, Sabi, hindi ka. Sinagdo ko sa kotse, sinakay ko. Dinala ko sa ospital. Napasin ko, habang dinadala ko siya, hawak-hawak siya yung bar niya. So, to cut the story short, I provided for the medicines, the x-ray, everything. And I said to the doctor, I'll be coming back this afternoon because I have to go to work. And when I came back, that afternoon, ah, she was already there. She had a bandage, she had a cast, because she had a broken arm. And I talked to her, sabi ko, Manang, kumusuho ko kayo? Iyo, salamat. Salamat. Then, I said, at ginagawa mo sa gitna na, you know, why are you there in the middle of the street? She's a victim of hit and run, right? Obviously. And, and she showed me her, her things, and she opened her bag, and she showed me a picture of his son. Sabi niya sa akin, isang buwan na ako umiikot dito para anak, bago man lang ako umatay. Makita ko man ito at ako na 20 years ko lang hinahanap. She says to me, Salamat sa'yo. And brothers and sisters, that day, I saw the eyes of Christ this person. I saw the eyes of God through her. The following day, when I went back, she was no longer there. She was no longer there. And I know what happened to her. Brothers and sisters, the opposite of love is not, it's not hurt. It's indifference when you don't care anymore to the people around you. And that is a sin. And that's what they call a sin of commission and omission. So that's the first reason. <laughs> first reason is sin. Man rejected the ways of God. Second reason. More than the human person, more than the human being, is a system of evil. Naniniwala ko ba kayo sa demonyo? Huwag niyong sabihin, amen. Just nod your head. <laughs> Satan. Lucifer. A fallen angel. Dati siyang napakagandang anghel. Naging proud. Naging proud. Sabi niya, I will no longer serve you, my God. 
I will be my God. And this angel turned his back on God. Declared war against God. Rebelled against God. And he wants to have his own army to rebel against him. And that's why we are tempted. Ruth, are you tempted? Every day we are tempted, Ruth. Say, say amen. Amen. Every day we are tempted. And who is tempting us? Not yourself, June. But E. It is Satan. It is Satan. And brothers and sisters, the consequence of sin and Satan is suffering and death in this world. That's the consequence. That's why there is suffering. That's why there is suffering. The good news. The good news. What's the good news? You know what's the good news? Sabi ng Panginoon, hindi ko kaya mong tiisin sa yung mga anak ko ay nagigira. And what did he do? What did he do? He sent his only begotten son. God became man. Emmanuel. Our Lord and Savior. He is our God, our King. Jesus Christ. God became man. That you and I will have fullness of life. The life that He originally planned for us to have. Now we can have because of that man. Because of that man. But wait a minute. If he is really God, become man. What an ending. What an ending. Crucifixion. Wow. If that person, that man, who is supposed to be our Savior, why did he die on the cross? The worst, humiliating, torturous, horrific kind of death reserved only for the worst criminals. Why? Because Jesus' mission was clear. And he wants to deal with your sin, our sin, Satan and death. That is his mission. Kahit bata ka, kahit matanda ka, kahit mahirap, mayaman ka, isa lang ang mission ng Diyos sa buhay mo. To save you. And that is why Jesus paid the price. He took it upon himself to be crucified. That you may have life, abundant life and life to the full, as God has promised. I want to hear everybody say Amen. 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 That is the mission of Jesus. That is what Jesus did to all of us. Brothers and sisters, you know, when, when God the Father in heaven saw Jesus suffering, He saw Jesus, His only Son, you know, this is my son, Jimmy. Son of God. Ayoka. Ayoka. My, my children are here. This is my son. That's, by the way, my wife and Jesse, they're here. This is my son. I love my son. The same way I love it, my two girls. He's my only son. And I will never allow not a single pain in your life, my son. But God the Father allowed his own son to die, to suffer. <coughs> And when I was looking at Jesus, 
I could just imagine the grief in, in God the Father looking at Jesus suffering. And and you know what? You know, Satan was the one who orchestrated the crucifixion. And, and Satan was so joyful, he said, Dali, patay. But you know what, brothers and sisters? When Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. Do you know what that means? You are saved. His mission is done. And you know what the Father did? His grief turned to joy. And you know what Satan did? His joy turned to grief. Because he put to death an innocent man. And Saint Augustine said, Saint Augustine said, in Jesus, we have victory. He brought us out from bondage to his death and resurrection and brought us out into the light. I'll tell you my own conversion story. You will have your own too. You know, I met God at a young age, but it's not as simple as, it, as that. I used to live a very worldly life in Manila. I was, at a young age, I was already successful. I was doing very well. I have my own brand new car. I have my own clinic. I was doing very well. And I became very proud. Every night, I go out. I go out. I spend all my money at night. Uuwi lang ako pag medyo madilim-dilim na. Ay, maliwanag na. Every day. And then I work again. And then I spend my money again on alcohol. On, on, I was smoking a lot. I, I was not a bad person, but I was doing all these worldly things. I cannot describe to you in details because my children are here. But yeah. it, it, it's really bad. It's really bad. Because they might tell me, Dad, ikaw ka, ginawa mo eh. No. It, it's really bad. And, and I, I, I don't know, but... I felt that emptiness in my heart. It seems like I don't know when I saya. When I go back home and I sleep, something is empty. Something is missing. At the one time, we had this drinking session, and and I was right next to this person, and he was this person, a single person. I was single at that time. Was sharing to that person in front of me while we were drinking beer and you know Johnny Walker or whatever, and then this this guy right next to me was sharing to this other guy about about a community that he belongs to. Lingkod ng panginoon, a community for single men and women in Manila. And he said, you know, you have to join. Sabi niya dun sa katabi namin. Hindi niya ako inibita. <laughs> Sabi niya, parang hopeless tong mamang to eh. Ikaw na lang, malilito ibitahin. And brothers and sisters, you know, just, just to give you a little bit of background, meron akong tinatambayan noon yung, have you heard of ozone disco? VIP si Dr. Urbidon. Kahit sampung tao, ipapasok ko walang bayan. VIP, every night nandun ako. Every night. Nandun ako sa, sa disco, you know, ito yung nasunog, yung mga bata-bata nasunog yung mga tao sa loob, okay? You know what happened that night? Friday ito. Friday ba ngayon? Friday. I attended without an invitation. Dun sa lingkod, single. Dun ako sa lingkod, serba ko lang mga tao. Wow, dahil maganda. Dahil single. But you know, that night, I saw something in these people that I want to have. Sabi ko, meron mo sila na wala ako. Ano kaya to? And I got curious. The following morning, I woke up in the newspaper. Ozone disco. Hundred people perished that night. If, if it weren't for that person who invited this other person, 
tapat nandun ako sa loob. Kasi gabi-gabi nandun ako. Gabi-gabi nandun ako. And that was a turning point. That day, I went to church. Lumuhod ako. Sabi ko sa Panginoon, Lord, bakit mo ako? Why didn't you save me? Why didn't you save me? Two things came to my mind that day. First, is the crucified Christ looking at me with his merciful eyes. And right next to it is responsorial psalm saying, the Lord doesn't deal with us as our sins. The Lord doesn't deal with us as our sins deserve. Brothers and sisters, the rest is history. By the way, I became active in that community. I dedicated my life serving God. I met my beautiful wife in that community, raised my children in community. And I can honestly say to you, with all humility that I am living the abundant life that God has promised from the beginning. Brothers and sisters, Jesus paid the price for you. He took the penalty for you, for us. He paid the price so that we will be free from our bondage. Free to choose whether to fight for God, to live for Him, to rise above our sins, to ask forgiveness. You have the freedom to do that because of what Jesus did. 2,000 years ago, He won the battle for us Victory is upon us, and there's no reason to struggle anymore. Let me end with a story. Let me end with a story. There was a man, a young man, who had a dream car. And so his father, who is so generous, gave him his dream car, a, a Lexus. A sports car, colored silver gray. <laughs> Itago natin yung tao ito sa pangalang Enrique. <laughs> so, si Enrique drove the car, his favorite car, the dream car of his life. Took a spin, going to Mati, drove, he saw a hitchhiker. One person flagged him down, the hitchhiker. And he said, okay, come on, ride, ride with me, because I'm alone. So they rode together, the hitchhiker rode with them, rode with him, with Enrique, and they had a talk. So they had a talk. And midway, sabi nung ni Enrique, sabi niya, you know, you're a good man. I trust you. I, I never offer uh, uh, hitchhiker arrived. But you're a good man. You're a, you're a good person. I like you. And you know what the man did? Said to him, if you really trust me, if you really, if you really look at me as a trustworthy person, will you let me drive your car? Will you let me drive your car? Brothers and sisters, when we look at Jesus, and what he has done, take it as an invitation. Take it as an invitation. Will you let Jesus take the driver's seat of your life? Will you let him lead you to the life that he has promised you? Will you follow him? Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.
and no one comes to bother except through him. I want to, to offer to you this uh, this uh, this song. You know, this is not an accident why man's dog man prepared this song because I tell you nothing is an accident. And this song is very special song to me. And I want us all to listen to this song. If you know the song, you can sing.